What's up, Docs and Docats? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and it is a an interesting day. Uh, depending who you ask, it's uh, it's uh, something was released or something was leaked. We don't know, but we do know that uh, there's a new cartoon on the uh, the horizon, and uh, so much so that I was literally in a, in a in rare form today. I was out all day doing stuff that had nothing to do with Looney Tunes critic, and yet somehow. I got 30 subscribers today. Thank you very much. That is very nice of you. I, at the very least, I owe you people a commentary. And so we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, this cartoon here that uh, just came out, Pest, Pest Coaster. Um, it's a great title. It's really easy to say, Pest Coaster. Um, now, one thing that does need to be mentioned before we get underway and before I introduce my guest is that. Uh, there is um, perhaps a bit of uh, upset, perhaps not, uh, about the fact that, um, I mean, uh, far be it from me to be the guy who complains about the intros and the outros of the cartoons and the credits and da 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 but that was back in the 40s when it really couldn't be helped and there's nothing that can really be done about it. But this is being done today and it's probably, yes, it's kind of shitty that the cartoon just begins with no credits and just ends with no that's all folks but of course not much can be done about that but what can be done at least by the likes of me is credit can be given where credit is due executive producer sam register and pete brongard directed by ryan kramer written by ryan kramer pete brongard johnny ryan storyboard by ryan kramer supervising producer alex kerwin this is what it would have said i assume in the titles that are cut off maybe not uh this is my assumption Based on the information I looked up, this is how it would look. Roughly, Rebecca Palatnik was the line producer. Casting director was Sarah Sherman. Voice director, Jack Fletcher. Starring the voices of Eric Bauza as Bugs Bunny, Fred Tadaschiore as Yosemite Sam, and Kari Walgren as Lady Baby Doll. Music by Carl Johnson. Animation by God Only Knows and Really Who Cares. Sorry, that's just a rant for me for another day. Anyway, speaking of animators, uh, I have one of the all-time greats with me here today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm I'm privileged to be uh, and humbled by, by what we're getting to see today, but I'm also privileged and humbled by my guest, uh, a great man uh, in his own right, who I've very fortunately gotten to, to know and be kind of chummy with the last couple of days or weeks or whatever it's been uh, during this this quarantine. There's only tiny little bits of light in all this this dark pandemic, and, and, and Greg Duffel is definitely one of those points of light. Uh, Greg, thank you for joining me from via Skype outside the country, or my country anyway. <laughs> and uh, thank you for, uh, I assume you've watched this already. Yeah, I did. I saw it, uh, just came up. I was watching YouTube today, um, and uh, the thing just kind of appeared yeah, on and, uh, my uh, Roku. Yeah. Thought, oh, okay. A lot of us got to uh, watch this thing. And a lot of us got the the interruption, and we're we're like, whoa, what is this? And um, now let's just real quick uh, for for those that don't know your name right off the bat, um, you're an animator, and you worked on among other things um, two Chuck Jones uh, shorts that he did in the '90s. I did. I had that. Uh, I had that pleasure. Yes, to, another to frog work with with Chuck Jones and uh, be employed by him and so on. And, and it was uh, so it was uh, you know obviously. It's a great honor to have worked with him. And it's another Froggy Evening and uh, Stupor Duck, right? Superior. Superior Ducks, to excuse uh, me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I, wish I, I wish I'd worked on Stupor Duck. <laughs> that was made the year I was born. So uh, yeah, I do apologize. It would have been a bit difficult, but... Uh, it's been a very long day. <laughs> yes, you're correct. All right, so... Um, and you also did some directing. Uh, you, you, you did... You had your own studio, um, you know, and uh, you did... Uh, Oh, you did. You did some Taz Tasmania episodes too. And you I have, worked with Ken Harris. You worked with Ken Harris. You have a cat. And Clearly, you yeah, have. A cat. I do. There's a cat there. <laughs> I uh, I met a lot of the Warner Brothers animators and directors somehow, briefly sometimes, sometimes a little more intensively. But uh, so I've been always been a big Warner Brothers cartoon fan since the. Uh, it seems like the day I was born. So. Uh, you know, it was uh, sort of a fate that I got to work on, work with Chuck Jones. I never thought I would. 
Well, or any of them. <laughs> I can only, I can only, uh, I can only guess what that's like. And then again, I, I only got to meet him once. But then again, I never thought I would ever get to meet him. So you and I are going to sit down and watch this. Your comments uh, are are absolutely uh, welcome. In fact, that's all I want. That's all I okay. want from you, Greg, is to hear running commentary on your thoughts on this this new cartoon, uh, which is apparently called uh, Pest Coaster, right? which I don't understand. Okay, so Pest, <laughs> Pest Coaster is now beginning. Here we go. Amusement Park. And uh, the, it's, it's going to be quiet, by the way. Uh, Some of this reminds me, that first shot reminds me of the cover of that uh, Maurice Noble book that Todd Paulson did. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Noble Approach. Yeah, I don't know why. but uh, They definitely uh, got the original colors. I mean, they digitized them, but... They got they got very close to the original. This was a strange bit, I thought. Why you don't see what he's looking at? You know, there there's no shot of what he sees. Just this thing flies in front of him, and he goes, and that's how he knows he's in an amusement park. Thought that was a lot. I like this line here. This place isn't kidding around. I am amused. That's straight up Eric Bowser. That's like one of those moments where, in the old days, Mel Blanc would just you know use his real voice for something. And it's not like Eric sounds like that, but it's it's not really Bugs. It 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 just sounds like Eric to me. You know what? It, you know, Bugs Bunny is more like that uh, little chick character in Slick Chick. I found. Yeah. Oh boy! Hey, you know, you know that kind. You know what I'm talking about in that yeah. Robert Lego cartoon? It's not like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> it's it's another character altogether. So when you look at the animation for this, what do you yeah. what do you see right away? I mean, after years of of working. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's sort of strange looking. I guess it's it's very the lines are are very clean, and you know, and sometimes you know it looks like they the drawings are okay, but I don't know. It just it just seems doesn't seem to flow. I guess you know it's not. Yeah. It, uh, it looks like they've taken every shortcut they could when they could. Yeah. You know, like sometimes they're not. It, I mean, you know, that looks okay. It feels very, I mean, no, this, I mean, I'm a huge, huge fan, but this feels kind of Ren and Stimpy to me. It's in Oh, places. well, that is really uh, endemic in this, in all these cartoons. Every The people who made this are influenced by Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, yeah. So you see it all the time. But there's a guy. And also they think that, 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 <clears throat> that Bob Clampett has something to do with Ren and Stimpy, you know, which... And because of John Crystal Lucy. So it's yeah. it all very confused. Well, and there's a gag coming up here too that we'll point out that is very Ren and Stimpy that you wouldn't have they wouldn't have done in the classic uh cartoons. And we'll point it out. I'll just call it the uh, the scarecrow gag. Well Frizz sure as hell wouldn't have done it. No, and this is very much in Frizz's style, you're right. Um This is a very strange sequence, I think. This whole part on the, the Yeah, because normally Yosemite Sam would be an existential threat to Bugs Bunny. Just sort of running around like that is not... But he'd have a gun, right? He'd have a couple yeah. of six-shooters or something. Yeah. Right? It'd be a, a problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yeah, they're they're funny about guns now. A lot of the time. I mean... So here we go. <laughs> that's not a bad drawing, and I don't mind that gag. But it is a written... And, and that looks like something out of Beetlejuice. That roller coaster right there. That looks like... Do you remember the Beetlejuice yeah. cartoon? Yeah. And yeah, it, yes, it's. Um, this is it. This is this is the gag. <laughs> Basically, he's dead, right? Yeah, but that, then, that's his skin. I mean, it's, and it's it's not. It's sort of what they would do at Warner Brothers, but. But not to that extent, and, and where somebody's basically died and lost their skeleton or something. Right. I mean, it's 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 grotesque. Yeah, but I mean, they don't color it in and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's definitely something they wouldn't have done in the old days. This gag doesn't really. Pl I remember when I, when I first saw this, I wasn't sure what the hell was going on. What that he hit it and then it went. Well, asleep. that he had a jetpack or something. I don't know. I just kind of missed it. You know. He, yeah. It's uh. They know. They know what's going on. We don't. I like the it, premise of this. This gag. I don't know that it was one hundred percent executed. I've only seen it like twice though before we recorded this. But I mean. Well, that Bugs Bunny. Like, notice how the background is just going by all the time, and he's on a roller coaster, but it's. Oh, yeah. and that's like Roger Rabbit. I'll save you, baby. Is that yeah. what they're doing? Well, he's worried that Bugs has the baby, you know. And I know, so but you don't know why. 
You yeah, know, like, I mean, why would he? Suddenly, why? suddenly he can Well, he later on he tells us because he walks to the camera and says, "By the way, I would never. I don't like no animals, but I don't want to kill no babies." He yeah, I know, but they're sort of. It's. I don't it, know, it, it is tacked on. It does kind of feel that, that you know the motivation should come before that. Boy, am I sure relieved I didn't hurt that baby. I despise me some animals. This looks very vacant, you know, for a, if you're trying to do a Warner Brothers cartoon. This whole, that bottom of the background. Now, this character here reminds me of the kind of styling in Home Tweet Home. The Frizz Freeling yeah. uh, Tweety Sylvester cartoon. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow, good call. I Yeah. And this is real, like, up close, gross, kind of. I love that it's on the toilet, though, still. That was a... See the thing is like it's it's the execution that can that can kill it. I mean, even if you have good ideas and you know good voice, I mean, just everybody who works on this is talented. That's there's that's not in question. It, the question is, does it work? Well, we say no. You would say no. <laughs> it's I would say no. I mean, it doesn't work because the the, the whole ending there with him and the baby, that's the whole like that's that takes up quite a lot of the whole show how, how, how long is this thing five minutes and 30 seconds yeah you see you know uh, you can't do it you can't have a story in that short amount of time that's why people don't like the the later warner brothers cartoons and i want to say the later warner brothers cartoons the ones made after about 1960 right because a lot of those are and the patty freeling ones that were made in the mid 60s they're all too short and and that was a progression over time where they would bring this the, the the length of the cartoon down you know like we we're saying i was talking to you the other day about a bear's tale the tex avery cartoon is well over nine minutes and then they got him down to eight and then they got them down to seven and then you know and then and then by 1960 i think it's a roadrunner cartoon in the late 50s that might be under six and then by the early 60s they're they're, they're getting down around six and with all the titles and everything, and then the Patty Freeling ones are around six or something. I could be wrong, but I, I think I'm close. It's hard. It's hard to because what you got to do is you got to establish the premise of the cartoon, which takes some time. You know, and in fact, I probably think they took too much time here. You, you, you've only got a minute to establish the premise tops. Then you do va variations on a theme throughout for the rest. But notice that what I, I could be wrong about this. I you know I haven't examined it uh, scientifically, but it has the feeling of working contiguously rather than a fade out, fade in. Right. There's no act breaks. Right. Right. And that's very helpful in a Warner Brothers cartoon because it gives us it suggests that that whatever is taking place has it's a has taken over a place. Yeah. Taken place There's over time. a longer period of time. Yeah. And Disney cartoons suffered from this, I think, in the sense that they, uh, they, most Disney cartoons, short cartoons, appear as if they start and then they just keep going and then it ends with a, you know, with Pluto winking or something, right? And whereas a Warner Brothers cartoon is designed completely differently and it's more effective. Do you think that this has the potential, this cartoon, to get people interested, like like younger people interested in the classics? Uh, I can't speak to that. I mean, uh, it depends. See, the thing is, we're running out of time on Ren and Stimpy. I mean, mm -hmm. Ren and Stimpy is what? We're getting up to 30 years yeah. ago now, right? I mean, yeah. that might be being forgotten. So you uh, you get the Warner Brothers cartoons maybe being forgotten, and then... Um, and then the Ren and Stimpy things being forgotten, maybe. Then, and then you, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to. Say. I can't speak for for people today what they're going to like and what they won't like. But I do. Like, I think there's great skepticism about about these films already, and I think that's surprising because it's, why is that? Well, I think that most people are pretty um, a, a kind to to this kind of work. I mean, I've seen. Things that you know aren't as good as this get, you know, people going, "Oh, that's pretty good." You know, have you seen? Going, wow, that's great. Well, whereas, you, whereas this one, this stuff is, uh, you know, it's already encountering a bit of, of pushback because it doesn't feel quite right, 
and and I think that's um, you know they're they're trying to make these cartoons using different techniques and and you know it's and also the you know they they can they can have the Bugs Bunny look like you know drawn sort of like he was in the 1940s but then they've got these backgrounds that don't go along with the characters they don't look like any Warner Brothers cartoon as far as I'm concerned that's ever been made so they don't fit nothing fits together you know in terms of uh, uh they don't I don't know it just doesn't look right um to me they're they're all like that that whole ending there with Yosemite Sam when he walks out of the um when he walks out of the bathroom it's uh, you know that's not that good you know I mean it's design wise it's not very good that's all I can say I mean it's uh, like this like, like the elements like the, the I think this is the, the, the woman character is okay that that's like what I said like a 1950 Warner Brothers cartoon but but what's behind it isn't is doesn't fit somehow and I, I understand that there are difficulties in this but and like then the title itself is kind of odd like right off the top of my head I could have I, I, I was talking with a friend of mine just a moment ago about this cartoon over Facebook like I came up with roller coaster rabbit you know I mean that's not that exciting but I mean it's maybe better than pest coaster well I mean or, that are or, they did that for Roger Rabbit already oh did they oh okay sorry yeah. then I thought coaster crasher that's way better yeah hair ride shelter <laughs> um, I like that I like that one a lot so you know I mean I mean that's just I was thinking for you know what two minutes just to just a moment ago um so uh I don't know it's just I I mean I I grant you know doing anything like this is difficult to even get it to be where you go well it's okay is hard mediocrity is is difficult yeah um that's all I to, make every day, and I work hard to make them. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, like you see some of these Hanna Barbera things from the from the seventies, and it has these talented people having worked on it, and it looks not so good, you know. But it's even to get to that level is not that easy, and so you know you have to give some credit to these people that they're you know they're trying. I mean, they are trying. All it's right, just, so it's just the the story material is weak. I'm going to give you uh, the last question here, and this is going to yeah. be this is going to be a doozy. Yeah. So having <laughs> having worked with the greats like Ken Harris and Chuck, in, in, what do you think they would think of this if they saw this? Well, the person I think that would have the biggest opinion about it would be, of course, Frizz Freeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't like this gag here you're seeing there, the one with where where basically Yosemite Sam dies, because he got bothered by Tex Avery's in that uh, all this in rabbits uh, stew, you know, uh, uh, Bugs Bunny breaking apart. I mean, that yeah. bothered him, even tempor- you know for a brief period of time. Hmm. That bothered him. You know, he didn't like that. He thought that was all. So he wouldn't like that. And that's probably the reason why people like John Chris Willis are so are so against for his freeling because he doesn't like that kind of thing, but, and they do. But um, I think, I think Frizz, because it's a Yosemite Sam and Frizz Freeling did most of the Yosemite Sams, I don't, you know, he wouldn't like it, I don't think, but I mean, hard, hard for me to speak for a dead man. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. I mean, he might be flattered that they're still using the, the, the combination of the characters and, the, but, uh, you know, and he probably would think, oh, well, you know, Bug buddies draw it okay, I guess. <laughs> Your seventy Sam's not right. Yeah, it's not right. His feet are too big. Your feet are too big. Your oh, seventy Sam. <laughs> that's a really apt. It, but that's a good impression, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, bug buddy. <laughs> wow. But um, no, I mean, I, I just I think they'd probably be critical of it because it wouldn't be up to their standards. And yeah. I think quite clearly it isn't up to their standards. And but you know. It takes time for people who, and I don't know what these people who have worked on this have done before, but it takes time to to um, get good at what you're doing, and and to work out the kinks and 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 learn from your mistakes, which 
people like Chris Freeling and Chuck Jones and Robert McKimson, they all had the ability to do. So, uh, but in this particular case, when a company just wants a whole bunch of stuff made within a couple of years, and then you just stop production and it's over, well, it's a bit difficult to do, isn't it? I mean, you, it's always really a bit of regret that you didn't have more time to to work it out and figure out how to do it or learn, as I said, learn from the mistakes. Greg, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about this, man. I really You're appreciate welcome, it. You're welcome, Thank you. And uh, we will uh, also be hearing from Greg uh, in my upcoming uh, video about uh, not just these cartoons, which is coming out on, on May 27th, along with, uh, I don't know, some other... There's some other thing going on on May 27th. I, I can't really recall. Do you guys remember? Oh, yes, there's this new series... The Looney Tunes cartoons. So uh, my uh, my review about this, uh, in as much as it's about, um, I'm not going to be you know reviewing these cartoons until after they come out. But there's a fair amount of what I jokingly refer to myself as we've seen this shit beforeness to the to these cartoons. We've been promised the goods before. And um, and while we are waiting to be wowed, and there is there has been a lot of good stuff, um, Warner Brothers has done this to us before, and we're going to talk about it in great detail in the upcoming review, which does include interviews with my good friend Greg, and also another good Greg, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, Greg Ford, and uh, we'll also be hearing from um, Jim Smith and Jessica Barutsky. And uh, so look forward to that. Anyway, guys, thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this commentary discussion about the uh, new Looney Tunes cartoons. I'm Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic. And until next time, that's all, folks. All right, Greg, thank you so hey, we much. Made it. So what did you think of it? It's fine. <laughs>